Hey everyone, it's Dennis Wood from Cinevate's Video University. Well, from Cinevate in general, I guess I tend to show up on most of these Video University sessions, but um, what we're talking about today is just basically a basic buildup of our DSLR rig, and we want to talk about a few features and a few options to help you uh, get this thing uh, unpacked and ready to go. Now, when this thing arrives, uh, and we're talking about the DSLR rig, now, it gets a little bit confusing because Cinevate now has two DSLR rigs. We've got basically one that uses two 15mm rails, and we've got the Uno back here, which again is missing a handle, but that uses a single rail. So there's two options. This option is really designed for people who are looking for the sort of ultimate in run and gun. Both are fairly compact. This is obviously lighter because there's less of it. Uh, it does include, the Uno though, does include a tripod plate and a handle, um, sorry, and a stock and a handle that can be rapidly configured. So this product is a viable alternative for people who are just looking for the simplest of rigs. The interesting thing to note though is that our follow focus works on either or, but uh, that's going to snug up right there. And we've got a follow focus that mounts on a single rail. But of course, we're not here to talk about Uno, although you can look at that in our catalog and we do have a video that covers this in detail. You want to know about this DSLR rig and perhaps you've received one and you're trying to figure out exactly how you should set this up. So this is really our focus today, no pun intended. Um, we're going to talk about... Okay, so we've talked about the Uno and now let's focus on the DSLR rig and sort of the configuration that you're going to see it in. This, this is normally shipped flat and folded back and it would be a, an omission and an error to think that um, you would actually use the rig exactly like this. We pack it like this because it's good for transport. Um, and really all you need to do is loosen this kip. And again, the just in case you don't know, all the kip handles can be pulled and relocated. So you can kind of, they're spring loaded and splined. So if a kip handle being, ends up being in a place where you don't like it, just pull it out and turn it. And you don't actually have to tighten or loosen it to do that. In this case, I'm just gonna um, deploy, if you like, the shoulder pad portion of our DSLR rig. There are three Allen bolts here. And you can loosen these and basically control uh, where in space this rig is up, down. And you can also loosen it and slide this part closer. Or you can flip this part around and if you're a left-handed shooter, put it on your left shoulder. So right now, it's kind of set up for my right shoulder. And I've got it set at a certain height. By loosening and rotating this piece, I have control over, over the height of the rig out in front of me. So why did I not turn the phone to vibrate? This is a good question. Let me take care of that. This piece here, normally you can probably get a, we'll get a close up for you of this, but um, there's Velcro here, and that Velcro is being provided on the pad that we send out. So um, this is just uh, pretty much peel and stick. The easiest thing to do is to remove the Velcro, stick it on here, which is where we put it, and then the pad can kind of go anywhere in here when you're using it. It's a nice, it's a really soft, robust pad. It's washable. It's made by uh, one of our partners here in Thunder Bay who makes military gear, uh, military packs for the Canadian military. So uh, it's very well made. Um, and again, there's your shoulder pad. So you've got the pad. Um, you have potentially this, this back component adjusted to where you want to have it. And it's important to note, of course, that if you're not using the shoulder rig, it's really an easy stretch to just pull it off. Okay, so um, you can actually set that aside if you want to play around with this rig because all you have to do is make sure that you leave yourself about an inch of rail back here to put that back on. In this configuration, for example, this tripod plate, and we get a lot of questions about this plate, uh, what threads do we support and so on. So um, we have 3 eighths, quarter 20, and 3 eighths. So um, you should be able to attach any quick release plate to this on the planet. Um, and if you've got two 3 eighths threads, then you can really uh, put it on there very, very securely. There we go. So we've got a quick release plate now installed. And again, we don't have to have that plate right there, nor do we have to have this configuration uh, facing forward. There's uh, in times when you're going to want to configure it like this, for example, and you may want to switch these pieces around. Uh, and, quite, and quite frankly, it doesn't really matter if this works for you and going, goes forward, then there's no reason not to use it like that. There's no hard set rules. So in other words, reversing it and doing the old flying V, as I like to call it, underneath the camera is just fine. Um, really, the important thing is that when you have it all loaded up and on your tripod, it's reasonably balanced. So we've given you a lot of flexibility. Um, it's also important to note that you can use our short links from the catalog, which are here. And you can see they're quite a bit shorter. 
and to give you a few more options, in this case we've got two of them on here, uh, which gives you the ability to, again, configure this differently. So instead of having the old flying V running out like that, you may end up having something like this on there using our short link. So it just gives you more options to lower the rig down if you want to. Our goal, of course, is always to try and keep um, things or objects from protruding below the rig. Why? Because when you go to slide that on your tripod plate, um, and I think I've just done that backwards, yep, you don't want to have things hitting the tripod itself, which uh, is just going to make rigging options, or just gonna reduce your rigging options. Okay, so we've got the, uh, the camera on the uh, the base plate right now and it's important to note that a lot of people will use we sell a universal uh, a Manfrotto part that basically uh, puts a quick release and so if you're using that part you're basically going to have the quick release plate sitting here it's a sliding plate that allows you to slide back and forth and also allows you to quick release um, so you've got basically have a quick release here and one under your camera and if you're using a number of devices like monopods um, steadicam uh, if you're using our LTS systems, it's nice to standardize on a quick release plate that you can just put everywhere. You may not want to carry the shoulder uh, bracket in here continually. However, if you're looking to do a quick lock off, uh, whether it's a sliding shot, I mean, there's no reason to take this off unless it's in the way. So in this case, we'll just take it off to keep the, uh, to keep our setup a little cleaner um, while we build up the rig. So we're going to just set that aside out of frame. And if you've got one of our older grips, um, these are a different design. Um, they're, they're aluminum and they use again the kip handles and they're designed to clamp on here and they're designed to clamp on very very tightly. Um, if you're looking at our new Uno and Medusa equipment or our DSLR rigs as of 2010, you're going to find a different grip uh, or an option uh, and this is the grip that's shipping now uh, which is a lot more versatile. Um, it's a, it's a basically made of a polymer that's very easy on the hands. It has a quarter 20 mount um, underneath it which is pretty handy if you're planning on, for example, using a handle as, say, a flash bracket. So instead of a handle being mounted under the unit, we have the potential to, say, mount it over here. I'm just going to throw this on and show you what I mean. Now we have, essentially, a handle that's perhaps where a flash could be, and your quarter 20 mounts there to take any accessory, whether it's a light or whatever. So there we have the follow focus in place. I can throw on the other grip. Now I'm going to probably slide our map box into place, so I want to leave a little bit of room for that. So I'm going to actually move this grip back slightly. And we'll throw on the other grip, like so. And again, I'm leaving a little bit of room for the map box. And of course, you're going to customize this rig to your needs, to your body size, all that kind of stuff. So um, I've got a built-in lens hood on this thing, which I'm going to take off. And we're going to retract this a little bit so we can show you how that map box will slide on. So. That's pretty much going to be the final part of this rig, if you have a map box. Again, I'm going to get this kip handle out of the way so it's not pointing forward. And I'm just going to grab the map box. We'll slide that on. That'll sort of complete um, the rig. If you have one of our cages like Medusa um, or the older style cage, it's probably going to be sitting right here in this configuration. Uh, and your base plate piece won't be required because the Medusa has already the base plate that your quick release will go on to. So we've kind of taken care of that for you. So I'll go ahead and grab the map box, we'll throw that on, and then we'll show you the completed rig. And at this point, what we have is a pretty complete rig. I'll swing that around. Map box in place. Um, I'm, you know, I'm a stickler for detail, so let's fine tune this height just so where I, I think it's about perfect, which is right about there. Definitely want to go back. Thank goodness, did it right. And we'll go ahead and balance and place the rig on our shoulder. And there's our completed rig. And you're going to go ahead and snug these up, get everything in your, in your correct position. Again, lots of flexibility in how you do this. This is just sort of a suggested method, if you like. But uh, ho hopefully that helps uh, when you get all the parts in hand and you're looking to make them work beautifully together. And uh, I hope that uh, helps with any questions you may have had in configuration. Call us, uh, 9 to 5 Eastern Standard Time in Thunder Bay. And uh, we can certainly help you out from Monday to Friday. And certainly uh, 24 hours a day, the website at Cinevate.com is available with our forum and Facebook and Twitter and a whole variety of searchable media uh, that should help you out if you have more questions. So thank you so much, and hopefully you'll tune in to another riveting episode of Cinevate's Video University.